chess experts all across the world have one opinion about Indian chess. It is soon going to be a superpower. Be it Magnus Carlsen, who says India is going to be the strongest chess country in the world, or Vladimir Kramnik, who says new Indian chess generation, strongest ever from one country. Well, all of them have one thing to say that Indian chess is on the rise. And why is that the case? I'm going to explain it to you in this video. My name is Sagar Shah. Let's go. So what are the reasons for chess boom in India? In this presentation, I want to acquaint you with 10 reasons which I think, in my opinion, are the most important ones why Indian chess has risen so well in the last two to three decades. If you see, in 1987, Indian chess had no grandmasters. As on 2020, the country has 66 GMs and boasts of 93,000 plus players registered with FIDE. How did this chess boom come about? Let's find out. The one man revolution. I think it wouldn't be wrong to say that a huge credit of the current chess boom goes to this one man, Vishy Anand. He not only inspired the entire chess community, you know, by his words, but he performed so consistently over the last three decades. He became the first GM of India in 1987 and then went on to become world champion five times. In 2000, he won the knockout world championship. Then in 2000, there was a tournament in Mexico, which he won. In 2008, he beat Vladimir Kramnik to retain his world championship title. And then he beat Topalo in 2010. Gelfand in 2012. So that was a long reign from 2007 to 2012. He defended his world championship title. And that's the reason why a lot of people in Indian chess have been inspired by Vishy Anand and chess has started to grow. You see this, this is the first chess board of Indian GMs. Vishy Anand, Dibendu Barua, Pravin Tipse, as you can see, we completed 64 GMs in 2019 and the first chess board was completed. Since then, we have had two more GMs. Some bit of statistics that I would like to share with you is over here. You see, the first GM which took place in, which happened in 1987 for Indian chess. After that, it took almost three years to get the next GM. Then the third GM again took quite a bit, bit of time, three to four years. But if you look at the year 2018, you will see that eight grandmasters were created. And in 2019, seven grandmasters were created. So you see, in, in a year now, the number of GMs that India is creating is huge. Uh, well, the COVID times have prevented us from creating more GMs. But I think one GM was even created in this uh, pandemic situation. If you look at the age, from 10 to 19, India has 10 grandmasters. From 20 to 29, 28 GMs. From 30 to 39, 22 GMs. So they are all very young and uh, trying to, you know, achieve a lot in chess, ambitious in that respect. If you see the distribution of GMs in the country, you will realize that majorly a lot of grandmasters are coming from South India. There's a better chess culture there also because Vishy Anand hails from the state of Tamil Nadu, especially the city of Chennai, which has 24 GMs over there. As you can see, Maharashtra has eight and West Bengal has eight right now. So these are like the chess hubs of India. You can see in the northern India uh, over here, there is a lack of chess culture. Uh, chess is now growing. So if you can imagine that strong chess players start sprouting up from the states like Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and all of these places, then there will be more GMs coming out from the country. So Vishy Anand was definitely a catalyst. He was the reason why Indian chess grew so quickly. But there are other reasons. The second reason that I would like to speak about is the support by government and public sector companies. Now this should not be underestimated because let's imagine that if a young kid has to play chess, then the first question that comes in the minds of the parents is 
what is the security that my child has if he plays chess and in india these public sector companies pspb is pub, uh, is petroleum sports promotion board indian railways is the uh, railways related company in india also there is um, air india and many other government companies public sector companies which have kept dedicated spots for sports players chess players especially as jobs where the chess players get employed and they do not have to even attend their work and they get paid a regular salary i think this is a key element and over 100 players have been employed in these different organizations in fact pspb already has within its fold hari krishna vidit gujarati adiban setu raman you name it the top player in indian chess is either uh, employed with indian oil uh, ongc oil and natural gas corporation or bpcl all these under the uh, pspb fold so that's why i think they have really given a sense of calmness to all the chess players in the country of course a new challenge is rising now with more gms coming up these companies also have limited sports quota limited chess quota so we'll have to wait and watch how things pan out over there now coming to the next point we come to the government of india the government of india has also supported the sport quite admirably every year there is a grant that is given from the government to the all india chess federation which is the the Feder which is the national sports body of chess and in 2019 the government granted 5 and a half crore rupees that is close to 635000 euros and this was used for exposure trips for grandmaster training camps for trainer seminars arbiter seminars and various other reasons and that helped uh, chess to flourish in the country so government support has been very very key moving on to the fifth point over here uh, you will see that indian chess has had some big stars rising up in the early 2000s and i think they were really inspired by the exploits of vishy anand if we come back here and check our first chess board you will see that anand was number one there was Barua, there was Thipse, there was Kunte. These four were like already very, very popular and well known uh, during the times of Anand. But then Sashi Kiran, Hari Krishna, Hampi, Ganguly, Chanda, Ramesh, they've all been inspired by Vishy Anand's exploits. You know, he played the world championship match. Anand played the world championship match in 95 against Kasparov. So he was already right up there in the 90s and so in the early 2000s you could already see these players the big champions of indian chess who went on to achieve huge things for indian chess one of the players who has contributed immensely to indian chess is koneru hampi this top woman player has achieved so much that she has also become one of the chapters in the textbooks in many of the indian curriculum you know the syllabus in schools uh, of course, she deserves all of this. She became the second women player ever to cross 2600 ELO after Judith Polgar. She's also reached the World Championship Finals, eventually losing to Ho Yifan. Uh, she recently won the World Rapid Championship. In spite of being a mother of a two-year-old, a three-year-old child, she left chess for two years. So overall, Humpy's grit, determination has inspired so many women players in the country to take up chess moving on the all india chess federation now nothing can be possible in in a sport if the national chess federation is not powerful what all india chess federation did quite well was that it managed to have all the state associations in the country there are several states in india which are very active with related to chess and they have managed to structure them well each state has district associations and all of this which makes chess functioning happen much better uh, you know they have also ensured that there are grandmaster tournaments taking place in indian chess for nearly a decade 
more than a decade now uh, so earlier indian players had to travel out of the country to get the norms but now with six to eight grandmaster tournaments happening in the country and they plan it in such a way that two or three events happen back to back so that the international players can visit at one go and play in several tournaments with a good prize money uh, so you see strong GMs, 2600 plus GMs coming to India and the youngsters get an opportunity to make their norms. Also during the late 90s and early 2000s, there were many strong uh, trainers who got uh, associated with Indian chess. You had Vladimirov, Sherbakov, Sorokin, Lysenko and all of them worked very hard with the Indian youngsters who went on to become strong players. And also AICF is making sure that it's not just about chess players, but also related to the arbiters, to the organizers, to the trainers. So they have all these seminars which take place uh, in the country. Moving on, a very, very important feature for any country to become a superpower in chess is the coaching. If you have good trainers, then your students are bound to improve. You will see that in India, there is no real structure when it comes to coaching. Like there is no government organization, there is no real policy as such to coaching. But there are very dedicated coaches all across the country who are working with chess players through as individuals or through their chess academies. And it's a very, very um, sort of unstructured way, but it's working out really well. And you will see that a lot of talents are being created because of this uh, sort of dedicated and one-minded training given by many of the accomplished trainers. Here's one case example that I want to show that how one organization can support chess in such a big way. You see nine GMs out of one school. Is it even possible? Well, it's called the Velammal Education Trust and they have done a great service and they have created nine grandmasters. As you can see on the screen, Pragnananda, Adiban, Kartikeyan, Arvind Chidambaram, Shyam Sundar, Sethu Raman, Kartik VAP, Priyadarshan and Gukesh and all of them have come out of the Velammal Education Trust. Now, what does this school do? Something which is so special that so many grandmasters are being created. Whenever a student of their own does well, they make sure that they publicize it well. They have banners like here you can see Gukesh uh, winning a tournament and then there were banners. So a youngster who looks at it gets motivated that wow, this boy achieved something and he has been publicized so well, I should also achieve something, I should also get felicitated. They also call famous personalities, not just from chess, like here you can see Anand, but also from all the sports to felicitate their youngsters and this also motivates them. And they also have cash prizes which are given to the students. Here you can see Adiban who had won uh, Asian title was given a uh, check of rupees 50,000. So all these things have led to nine grandmasters being created from one educational institute. And also uh, it must you must bear in mind that whenever they have to go to school, the school is very, very uh, accommodative. They give leaves to the students They're like, OK, if you can manage your exams, that's great. If you cannot, then we will make sure that uh, we will adjust your exams and so much support given to the chess players overall. Nothing would have been possible without the parent support. And I believe that Indian parents have actually gone on to give their whole and soul to make sure that their kids achieve something truly spectacular. If you see in this picture, you have four of the young talents of Indian chess. On your top right, you have Nihal Sarin. Left, you have Pragnananda. Bottom left, Ronak Sadwani and bottom right, Gukesh. These are four young talents of Indian chess extremely performing well. And all of them, of course, there are many more examples, but just for the sake of this illustration, I would say Nihal's parents, Prag, uh, Raunak, Gukesh, they have contributed so much. They have left their jobs. They have traveled with their kids and they have made sure that they all could become GMs 
at a very very young age coming to a very important point is sponsors and private corporates it's a uh, extremely important that in chess there should be sponsors who not only support tournaments but also individual players as you can see here pragnananda the young talent is being supported by a group called ramco and he wears their jersey and he travels to tournament and he is supported very very well by this ramco group for nihal sarin it's the akshay kalpa group a milk uh dairy company which has given a huge amount of sponsorship so that his talent reaches the right destination there's also a company in india called microsense networks which is working really hard for the growth of indian players they have put in a lot of funds so that these youngsters get world class training as you can see from the picture these are the young talents of indian chess all almost below the age of 18 years they got a chance to not only interact but also train for nearly 10 days with kramnik and gelfand so the first training camp happened near switzerland where kramnik trained these six youngsters it was truly a phenomenal experience for these uh, youngsters and then the next one happened in chennai where from six there were 14 participants who all learned not just from kramnik but also gelfand so microsense such companies they just come in and they support the youngsters because they see the potential that they can, that these youngsters can become the future stars of india in the lockdown right now it has been quite a tough time for the world overall but for chess it has been a big boom especially in india that's because there were certain streamers who did tremendous job on through through streaming online platforms and you can see in this picture from top left you have adiban and there were these comedians vaibhav sethia samay raina biswa kalyan rath who joined in and these comedians loved chess and they brought in the common people who like chess but never really got the time to get interested in it through their humor and making it light they got so many people and it started a revolution you can see vidit gujarati here anish giri surya ganguli agad mater and also rajabow they all started streaming together along with chess base india and on the finals of the online olympiad we had a massive 68000 plus people following the live commentary on youtube which was simply unprecedented in the world of chess and this was because so many people got interested in chess during the lockdown what is the future of indian chess well i would say it's very very bright as you can see anand mahindra who's one of the biggest businessmen uh the head of mahindra companies it's a group of companies a billionaire he wrote on twitter that he is happy to talk about the indian chess league that would happen uh that could happen in india in the future and so you can see that even the biggest of companies in india are getting interested in indian chess i would like to end this presentation by saying that chess base india started in the year uh 2016 that's me and my wife amruta we founded the company together frederick uh frederick friedel and mathias mullen weber here who are the uh, founders of chess base 35 years ago and chess base india started 5 years before and we have been working very very hard to promote chess in india to the best of our Uh, abilities in fact the rise of these young talents has coincided with the growth of chess base india we've tried to bring in high quality news softwares at a discounted price so if a software is expensive in europe uh, or in the us we have tried to slash down the prices and sell original software here so that people can afford it in india because the spending capacity is lower we have been very very active on social media we have a vibrant youtube channel which has 465000 subscribers we are trying to get in the best books from various uh, different publishers like quality chess 
every man chess um there is thinkers publication gambit and we're trying to get them to india at again a discounted price for the people for the youngsters to read we have a foundation that is working around the clock for the youngsters supporting them with scholarships those who are not financially able uh, to support their career we are trying to help them and also a lot of online tournaments are being held especially relevant in these times of lockdown and covid 19 where players have received a fresh boost and earning so we are trying our best to support indian chess but as you can see over the slides which i have shown that the 10 different reasons why indian chess has really boosted is vishi anand who has played a huge role and uh, government and public sector companies the government of india which has supported tremendously the the champions who have been inspired by vishi anand hampi of course you cannot forget her contribution the all india chess federation the national body which has supported the sport the coaches and the trainers educational institutes like velammal who have helped the youngsters to support their chess and education both together private sponsors like ramco akshay kalpa microsense who have come forward and supported indian chess tremendously and of course the streamers in the lockdown and last but not the least chess base india uh, humble role in this entire thing chess boom of india and i hope that this chess boom continues to happen and we become one of the superpowers in the world of chess this is sagar shah signing off thank you so much bye bye